Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is TrophyNut, the babbling Belgian, and I have waited so long for this. This is Trunebreaker, the Witcher Tales. So, uh, finally, the uh, full release of Gwent, and mainly its uh, single-player campaign, Tronebreaker. Um, you know what? I'm just gonna press X to begin. I will go from there. Uh, just to give you guys a bit of backstory, I've played a lot of Witcher. I've uh, done an entire playthrough of everything in The Witcher 3 and both of its DLCs, which you can, of course, find on this channel as well. And I'm a really, really big Witcher fan. I've read all the books uh, more than a few times, so uh, I'll be able to provide any backstory about any cards you wouldn't r recognize from uh, any of the games. I am not going to skip this, so enjoy! Get them shackles off him. Poor sod can't eat proper. Do you know? I'm not sure I like that. What if he runs for it? He's worth a heap of coin. Ah, bollocks. Been all in him a week, hasn't tried a thing. Why are you up and bold now? Matter of fact, got to thinking. What did a sweet, gentle chap like him do to get the Queen of Zedicania so riled? She's a shrew, that's a queen and witch in one. <laughs> Worst of both worlds. Enough about her. What do you say to one more of your tales? Or we toss down some cards. Ah, why not? And since you mentioned one queen... There we go. One queen, and look at that. What a logo that is. Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. So, as far as I know, it's pretty much the only thing I know about the single-player campaign. It's about Queen Meave of uh, Rivia and Lyria. So, uh, yeah, auto-saving feature, fair enough. And now we can choose between New Game or Gwent the Witcher card game, which is awesome. Um, with, of course, the animated cards. So the main difference between this and Gwent is, of course, A, it's gonna be a full-blown single-player campaign. If you're wondering why we're just playing a card game, we're not. Thronebreaker is actually its own standalone story, its own single-player campaign with the card battles being more uh, akin to puzzles than uh, the standard Gwent battles. Um, it actually says try Gwent the Witcher card game, so I don't know if this actually replaces Gwent on my... Uh, as a game itself. We'll, we'll, we'll see later on, because uh, of course we're here for the main event. So, new game. Select the difficulty. Adventurer, Battle Hardened or Bonebreaker. For players familiar with Gwent and ready to put their skills to the tests. I am really familiar with Gwent. I played quite a bit of Gwent when it was in beta. But Battle Hardened for players seeking a moderate challenge and an impactful story. Impactful story sounds like what we're going for here. So let's go with Battle Hardened. And then of course we get card descriptions in between the... Uh, well, during the loading screens. And that seems to be still doing the same thing, because I know that the rules of Gwent have changed a bit as well between the beta and the year this bit. But, here we go, story! War hung in the air, its scent palpable. The mighty empire of Nilfgaard stood poised, greedily eyeing the northern realms just across the Yaruga. In light of the threat, the realm sovereigns met in summit. They made declarations, pledged fraternal assistance, forged alliances, and then, in good spirits, dispersed. Among them, Meave, queen of the twin realms Lyria and Rivia. Know the name? Hmm? Heard her beauty extolled? Justly so. Remarkable she was. Not for her graceful exterior, but for her persistence and courage. Where was I? Ha! Ah. As the Queen and her retinue neared her capital, Count Caldwell appeared. In Meave's absence, the Count was to have helped her son, the youthful Prince Willem, run the Twin Kingdoms. Sounds like a man that might double cross us later on. Caldwell had ridden hard. Drops of perspiration dangled from his whiskers, his neck red and chafed from a rough, starched stiff. It's cool that this works similarly to, like, I mean, it's a storyteller, so it kind of sounds like someone's reading one of the stories from the books out loud. But just a bit of backstory. So Queen Meave of Lyria and Rivia 
is a character we do actually see in the books quite a bit of. Mainly the meeting we just heard about between the kings and Queen Meave of all the northern realms is something we actually read about in the books in full. So the entire discussion is actually inside of the book. So let's Hail, continue that. Your Majesty. Delighted to see you in good health. The summit, it ended fruitfully, I hope? Yes, at its end, letters were exchanged, documents signed, paper. Time will tell of what value. That will suffice as cordialities go, Caldwell. Tell me what's happened, for I sincerely doubt sheer longing prompted you to ride out. Indeed, Your Grace. Another circumstance inspired me to do so. <clears throat> the strays of Sparla, the bandits. I was attend to during Your Grace's absence. The situation's gotten out of hand, I fear. Okay. So, uh... We kind of get options here as well, so dialogue options. So let's calm Caldwell down Steady a bit. Caldwell. Come now. Deep breath. All right, speak. What has happened? Be precise. As your grace ordained. I set out and was nipping at the bandits' tails for long. We pursued for weeks, until scouts returned, having sighted the strays camp in the forest near Lockeran. We waited for nightfall to surprise them as they slept, Alas, it proved a ruse. We found the tempt empty. Straw stuffed dummies round the fire. Soon, we learned that as we waited for the sunset, the strays had snuck away, rounded our positions and ridden to Hawksburn. I beg your pardon, my lord. The tax collectors. That is where they station. So the gold? All of it? Uh, it's stolen. Your Grace, but I shall do all in my power to recover it. This I vow, if it be Your Grace's wish. Okay, that's a big problem. After weeks in the saddle, Your Grace's wishes are modest. A hot bath and a night's sleep in her own bed. Yet, they shall have to wait. I must look personally to this matter. Your force, Caldwell, I will now command. You, send a herald to Hawksburn. They must prepare for the Queen's arrival. Air the rooms, dust off the porcelain. Make certain they do it. Do you see now, Reynard? I believe I foretold it would be thus. My son wasn't ready in the least to rule an entire country. I confess, Prince Willem has much to learn yet. Hmm, yes. And very little time. So Reynard is also a character from the books, if I recall correctly. So Queen Meave's right hand man. So welcome to the Thronebreaker tutorial. Before embarking on your adventure, you should get acquainted with basic game mechanics. Fair enough. You can control your character using the left stick. Follow the cobblestone road to reach the next stage of your journey. Which is awesome. So we're actually playing as Queen Meave herself. Uh, I'm not going to talk about what actually happens with Queen Meave in the books after the summit. Because of course I don't want to spoil anything just in case it happens in this story. You will expand your army throughout the game, but to do so you must collect the following types of resources. Gold, wood and recruits. While on the road you can find useful items and even new companions who will support you in battle. If you don't want to miss anything, be sure to thoroughly explore the map and complete side quests. Okay. So this is actually a fully fledged out system then. Okay. Um, so that means I need to just look around a bit. So since of course she's a queen, she can just take whatever she wants, I assume. So there we go. A bit of wood. And then of course this, what's this? A side quest? Nine. Oh, that's just troops we gathered. Okay, that's cool. And then a bit of wood and a bit of gold. Then let's talk to these people. Look, they stretched her over a fire till she told them where she buried her gold. Okay, that was cozy. I can't talk to the man, but maybe we can talk Rather to her again. Than tell him she would, but I know where she kept it. Uh -huh. Sit tight, sketch it out here. Okay, so those are trees, and uh, right in front of a house. Hmm. Is that here then? No, wait, wait, wait. It's probably not so close by, although... Might have to take a look back. Give me a second. So nothing there, but I love how this game looks. Like, 
This is cool. An, an incredibly new style for, well, especially for The Witcher, but in general, this is really nicely done. Because it is, it looks three-dimensional, though it could be something completely different. But at least Meave looks three-dimensional. Might be that, yeah, this looks to be more 2D. But let's talk to this man. Uh, no, we can't. Um, so there's a house in between some trees. That tree is blocking the road. Uh, this looks like it would be it. Yeah, there we go. Treasure! Treasure in front of the house. Congratulations, you've discovered a card that can be used in the Gwent multiplayer card game. Reynard Odo. Let's claim that. Great. Don't know if we got anything else from that, but that was cool. So yeah, no spoilers about what happens to Meeve or Geralt in that case, because of course Geralt meets Meeve and that's how we meet her in the first place. An obstacle blocks your path. To remove it, you will need to spend some of your resources. Okay. Your Majesty, Majesty it seems someone's felled an old oak, which now blocks the road. Unfortunately, our wagons cannot go around it. How do you wish to proceed? Have the lockers sort the matter. Our soldiers should conserve their strength. Issue access to the soldiers and put them to work. So one person and 25 wood. Well, since we're not really at war just yet. Well, aside from the fact that we're at war against Nilfgaard. Let's just use one of the soldiers to do it. So just to give a bit of context. This is smack dab in the middle of the, the saga about Siri. So the original book saga about Siri. Most interactive objects are marked clearly on your map, but not all. Some events cannot be predicted, so you'd best prepare for anything. Count Caldwell rode at the column's head, scanning its flanks with a wary eye that, despite his advanced age, proved very sharp indeed. Your Majesty! Bandits! There! At the tree line! The Count's footmen, unaccustomed to escorting their queen, sought to shield her with their bodies and assumed a tight formation to do so. They were promptly knocked aside as Meave charged headlong at the bandits, brandishing her blade and bellowing a ferocious cry. Attack! Charge! Okay, so that seems to be our first battle. And it's not exactly the same. Meave was convinced the bandits would flee to the cover of the forest upon realizing their grave mistake. After all, no ordinary bandit would dare attack the retinue of a queen. Yet the strays of Spala were a different breed. They held nothing sacred. So let's start the battle. So it's not exactly the same music, but it sounds really familiar. The, the Gwent music. So this is the battlefield. You will play your cards on the bottom half and your opponent will play on the top. Units can be played in one of two rows, melee or ranged. Ah, so two rows instead of three. But remember, the abilities of some cards may be different depending on the row you play them. That is interesting. A standard battle can last up to three rounds. The first to win two rounds wins the whole match. Players alternate their turns. During your turn, you can play only one card, but you can use any number of abilities. The player who goes first in a match is the same who initiated the battle. In this case, you encountered an ambush, so your opponents will have the first turn. Stray Slinger. An outrage! Move, okay. The strength of each unit you play adds to your army's total strength. The player whose army has the most strength points at the end of a round will win the round. Some units have armor. Armor absorbs a certain... Yeah, we know all that. The men await. You must lead to begin the attack. Most cards have an ability of some kind to learn more about that. Yeah, okay. So play any card. I just want to check out. Move one unit to the row opposite to this unit and damage it by one. But that's on the ploy, so that's fair. Then we have a Lyrian Sightman, boost self by 5. Let's keep that, because it doesn't really damage anything. Let's keep that for later. Lyrian Arbalest, damage an enemy by the number of cards on this row, including self. And then we have Count Caldwell, play a copy of each adjacent unit from your deck. So let's, I think we should then start with the Lyrian Sightman. There we go. Ah, you're on the salt of the earth, they are, your grace. They follow you into fire. You need simply say the word. Wait, what does loyal mean in this case? Sidemen have the loyal ability. This means that their other abilities are activated every time you use Meave's ability. Oh, 
You see it has its own unique ability to learn what it is, just select the leader. Nii's ability allows her to boost a unit's strength and add armor to it. She can use this ability once every few turns, should have done that first then. To use Meave's ability, first select her, then select one of your units. Ah! I shall teach you to respect the crown, you dogs! And then that boost, yeah, that goes up by 5 again because of... Aha, so you can, you need to manually end your turn now. Fair enough. So usually that happens automatically after you... Whenever an enemy takes damage, boost self by 1. Okay, so that's talking about us. Play any card, but we have either the Lyrian Arbalest or Count Caldwell. So let's just go over here. Arbalest, your command. And then damage these uh, Strace Cavalry, actually. So that removes the armor. And then I don't think I can. Pull down tree, so yeah, I need to end my turn. There we go. Do love how it's all three-dimensional now. The opponent's cards also have abilities. Be sure to read their descriptions carefully so he can move my unit and adapt your strategy accordingly. Okay, so that means I can use Count Caldwell next. So wait, now we're 12 versus 21. I'm gonna put Count Caldwell over here because I can do two damage after that. Although, I don't think it will really matter at the moment. So we put another copy of this card down. So the Arbalest. And now we can do three damage on... Oh no. Wait, what? what does that say? Damage an enemy by the number of cards in this row, including self. Why can't I go further? I can't attack them in the back, apparently, so... Let's just do that. <laughs> the strays took ten and run. <laughs> there we go, we won our first match. Yes. I don't think you could actually lose our that. victory is assured! Sound the horns! May they sing praises of this triumph for ages! Probably just a simple battle. When you have played all your cards, the end turn button will turn into a pass button. When you pass, you will not be able to perform any actions until the start of your next turn. To end the last turn of a round, press and hold triangle. Player whose army has the most strength points at the end of a round will win. There we go. Yet done. It is better to conserve our strength. Prepare for a strike that will prove decisive. Okay. So second round. At the beginning of the second and third rounds, each player draws three cards from the deck. So that's changed as well. Protect the queen! Uh, the player who won the previous round will play it first in the next round. So that's us this time, so play any card. So let's put another Lyrian Sightman down. This artist will be reaping black clouds. And I think, yeah, we can boost her again. There we go. Let's end the turn. And let's see what the bandits can do. Um... So I could go for another Sightman and then see what happens next. Because he starts moving units around, so if he does the same thing... Let's try that, let's put him up there. And let's hope that he changes the direction again. No, whenever an enemy takes that, yeah, so it's the exact same thing, which is too bad. Uh, let's put that over here. And attack him. I don't think I will be able to. No. There we go. Boss. That's 28 versus 9. He probably hey. only has one of those slingers again. There we go. You've won two rounds in a row, which means you are the battle's victor. I Congratulations. You on your victory, your grace. The bandit stood not a chance. There we go. Victory! And look at look at the little dance in the background there. Ooh, and Biting Frost is still in the game of, as well. <clears throat> Matters seem indeed to have gotten out of hand, to put it mildly. Meave said, arms crossed atop her shining breastplate. They've grown bold. Doubtless after the raid on the manor, the tax collectors. I've not heard of an ambush on the high road before. Caldwell explained, avoiding his liege's wrathful gaze. Enough, Caldwell. We must put things right. Come! The Queen's retinue set out, cavalry in front, infantry and arbalists close behind, and, following in the rear, the bandits, bound in chains. 
Okay, so there we go. Bandits have spala done, and now we can actually... Ooh, look at that. That is horrible. Let's grab whatever we get from that. A bit of wood and a bit of gold. And can we actually loot? Yeah, we can, actually. There's another pile over here. Um, and that seems to be it. Ah, uh, I do adore this prospect. Yes. Lyria, the Pearl of the North. With its hills and dales. Why, its beauty matched only by that of its queen. Oh, After you three kiss weeks ass. In a saddle, I've my doubts, Count. We shall pitch camp here. Our soldiers need respite. A spell of it they deserve. Indeed. So yeah, Caldwell seems like a bit of a kiss ass, but too much as a kiss ass. So to survey your army, you must first pitch camp. Pitch your camp by pressing the touch button. Camp buildings allow you to expand your army and give you access to important information. Most camp buildings can be improved in your workshop. These improvements will give you access to stronger units, thus easing your journey down the line. Enter the workshop. Okay. There we go. Royal Tent. You can check your main objectives and official correspondence here. Here you can build and improve camp buildings. To improve your camp buildings, you must first collect the appropriate quantity of gold and wood. For your journey, you'll definitely need access to a regional map, but to get it, you will first need to improve your Royal Tent. Upgrade the Royal Tent. If you ask me to, there we go, 50 wood and a thousand gold. Thanks to this improvement, you now have access to the regional map, which you can open from the main game screen. The workshop itself can also be improved with each subsequent improvement. You will gain access to new stronger units. Go to the command tent. I'm assuming that's that. Or, nope, that's the command tent. In the command tent, you can create units and build your army from available cards. Improving this building will increase your army's recruit cap, allowing you to use stronger units. The cards currently in your deck are displayed on the left-hand side. All cards available for you to create and place in your deck are displayed on the main screen. You can gain access to new cards by upgrading your training grounds and workshop, as well as through certain story-related tasks. So I think, yeah, Reinhardt is already in the deck. So that means that every card we have is probably in that deck. Great out cards are available but have not yet been created. You must first create them before you can include them in your deck. Your deck must contain a minimum of 25 cards while not exceeding your army's recruit cap. Currently your recruit cap sits at a 125 points. To create new cards you need a particular resource recruits which you can gain recruits at conscription posts which are marked on the map with the helmet icon as well as through certain story related tasks. Where is that Wagenberg? Ah, there we go. Wagenberg, damage all units on an enemy row by this unit's armor amount, then lose all armor. Gain one armor whenever a card appears. And what is order? Order is probably you can activate that manually, probably. So Wagenberg is cool, so that's also hinting at something that happens in the books where the troops actually use cards to form a barricade from which they can attack the enemy. So let's create a card. So order and ability triggered manually by the player. As I thought, units with order cannot be used for one turn after being placed on the battlefield, whereas artifacts can be used immediately. Okay, let's recruit them. 250 gold, 2 recruits and 50 wood. Yes. There we go, and we get one. Okay, so now we can put that in our deck. You can now view and create new cards or return to the main game screen to continue your journey. So I'm at the maximum of my recruit cap actually, so I'm at 125 points so I can't actually do anything more. Aside from the fact that the game tells us we can. You can now take a look at your other camp buildings to familiarize yourself with their functions or you can return to the main game screen to continue your journey. I'm quickly going to check around what we can do. So the royal tent. You can view the letters and maps you've received so far, as well as keys and card fragments. The Royal Tank can also be accessed from the main game screen by pressing R1. Okay. Letters. Royal Steward's Letter. Your Highness, artisans from Kradobor have prepared a new tapestry pattern for the throne room. I've included an engraving of the design. You will be pleased with it, I hope. A Centrian lion inherited from King Coram I. So Centra is the... The land where uh, Siri comes from, by the way. Um, Baird Fangs offer stunning realism, and the ancestral sword of the Delans of Temeria appears as if forged in the very depths of Mahakam. 
I've no doubt it shall prove the castle's latest masterpiece. We eagerly, eagerly await your return, my lady, Gustave Perrault, royal steward. And then a letter from King Damavent. Dear me, if you've my gratitude for attending the summit, what luck we did not put off meeting any longer. From what my men say, armies on the march are kicking up a veritable dust storm across the Yoruga. Come with me, remember you have my full and unconditional support. Best wishes, Demavend. So, the kings and Meave of, uh, and queen of course, of um, the Northern Realms have been quarreling un between themselves for quite a while. But now that Nilfgaard is coming, they are of course scared of what's happening. And there we go, Nilfgaardian movements. Noted increased in Nilfgaardian activity in foothills of Amal Mountains near Reedbrun. Ambassador claims routine training exercises. Number of troops, quality of equipment indicate otherwise. Recommend strengthening border forces and tripling patrols along the Yoruga. And then report the Straits of Spala. Bandit group formed after revolt in dungeons of Spala Castle. Mainly pickpockets, racketeers, cut purses and assassins. Armed with slings, daggers, instruments of torture stolen from Spala. Headman's axes, saws and hammers. Cleverer and bolder than common bandits attack, heavily armored convoys, noblemen's mansions and unable to determine identity of group's leader. So we haven't seen the group's leader yet, so that's interesting. And then the mess tent, you can talk with your companions in the mess tent. Give them a little bit of your time and you may just learn a secret or two. Who's that? The Grey Rider. There's a few people hidden in the background, but I can't talk to them. So let's talk to Reynard. A bit of respite, Reynard. Or Reynard. Uh, yes. But if you've any new orders, Your Grace, I can be ready at any... Ah, oh, calm Raymond. down. At ease. Um... It's not wearisome sitting alone. You only alone. wearisome sitting alone? Wouldn't you prefer another's company? Swapping tales with the innkeep, even? Your concern, I most appreciate, Your Grace. But I prefer silence. Has it always been thus with you? Ever a man apart? Quite the contrary, Your Grace. As a youth, I gloried in company, delighted in conversation. So what was it that changed you? That delight nearly cost me my head. But do you truly not know the tale, my lady? How I came to be your departed husband's aid? No. I don't, but would gladly hear it. I had but 20 winters behind me when I enlisted. Yet I was granted the rank of lieutenant from the start, not by merit, but by birth. The respect of veteran officers, both my peers and seniors, that they could not grant. Nor did I deserve it. To earn that respect became my driving aim. And to seem wise beyond my years, I began spouting off about the King's decisions. This maneuver Reginald botched, that he failed to think through, and yet elsewhere he'd blundered like a schoolboy. Okay, for Reginald to err wasn't unheard of, doomed to end badly that, I dare say. Well. A brilliant strategist Reginald was not. They dubbed him the courageous, not the cunning, for good reason, I dare say. It was not long before I was clanking about in shackles. Another officer had reported me. I was charged with Les Majesty. The court martial took but a quarter of an hour to deliver verdict and sentence. I was guilty of treason, and the noose awaited me. But Reginald first stayed the execution then ordered that I repeat every word I'd uttered about his person or deeds. Soaked with sweat, my voice cracking, I did as he ordained. Reginald listened, raptly and silently, and when I'd finished, he declared I was right. He then appointed me his personal aide. A clever lad like you, I can always use at my side. There we Indeed. go. Though hardly sharp himself, wisdom in others Reginald both recognized and heeded. It was then I swore two things. Firstly, never again to wag my tongue like a fool. Secondly, never to betray his trust. I mean, never again to wag my tongue like a fool. It got you a very fancy chop, if I might say. And you never did. Know what he told me moments before he passed. Trust none of them, Meave. Save Reynard. The old sod was right about that, at least. Hmm, I thank okay. you for sharing that tale, Reynard. Truly. So that gives us a bit more backstory about Reynard himself and how he got to the army. Willem is not suited to be king. Alas, Let's... I've come to fear Willem might simply not be cut out to be a king, let alone a good one. A harsh judgment, Your Grace. Let's not be hasty. The prince has but 16 summers to him. 
and is thus fully grown. The crown he should be able to bear at his age. Yet I left the land in his care for but a few months, and look what's become of it. Bandits roam and loot unchecked. We might yet learn of mitigating circumstances, events beyond his control. Would that it were so, Reynard. Would that it were so. Elsewise, we must hope Anseus will demonstrate more wit than his brother. Though I see little chance of that, either. She does not have a lot of confidence in her own children, but uh, let's it's go. I attended to other matters. So, if you're wondering where you've seen that mark on her uh, on her armor before, it's of course the the shield of Lyria and Rivia, which means that uh, yeah, that's the same mark that Geralt actually gets on his armor in the Blood and Wine DLC when he joins the uh, the games. So uh, let's check out the Grey Rider. Ooh, statistics. Total time spent half an hour. Golden chest found only... Oh, there's only 10 of those. Okay. That's the only thing this guy can actually do. That's weird. So, since there are no other characters, I'm just gonna pop out. Remember, remember that you can open your map by pressing triangle. There we go. So, this is the one we opened up already, I think, as we went, yeah. Your primary task is marked with an exclamation point to see what awaits you next. Scroll through the map by using the right stick. Yeah, there we go. And that's pretty much... Ooh, look at that. Like, pretty pictures of uh, farmers all around. And then, ooh. That's not as nice. That's a harpy. Ooh, goes actually... Ooh, wow. This goes pretty far. Obviously. So the next village is our next objective. So let's go and do just that. Is that something I can pick up? Nope. There seems to be a traveler over here. For, to be robbed along the high road and in broad daylight, no less. Okay, hello, sir. For mandatory merchant routes and stacking rice, why I'd have gone round through Sodden. Okay. They told me. They told me. Lyria's a wild land, lawless, chaotic, a damn disgrace. Were it not for mandatory merchant routes and stacking rice, why I'd have gone round through Sodden. Okay, okay, okay. He just keep. He just keeps going. Apparently, nothing else to say. My dear man, just complaining about everything. What is that? Your army's morale can change. Neutral morale has no impact on your cards, whereas low morale lowers each unit's strength by one point, and high morale increases it by one point. The army's current level of morale is displayed by an icon in the upper left corner of the screen. Changes in morale depending on your choices throughout the game. To increase it, make an offering at a wayside shrine. But remember, after victorious battles, morale returns to north neutral, so you must always keep an eye on it. Okay, so we can use shrines to temporarily boost our morale. There we go. Okay, that's a bit weird of a system. Oh god, yeah, there, there's ghouls and all ghouls down there. Don't there. Eating Whatever those men. Is this filth? Necrophages. Drawn here by blood scent. For such vile monstrosities to prowl the high roads of my realm. I won't allow it. Attack! Okay, attack. Let's uh, defeat some ghouls. Who were these travelers whose bodies now litter the roadside? They had the look of pilgrims who found misfortune after crossing paths with the strays of Spala. The bandits had slit their throats, leaving the bodies to rot under the sun. They had likely have known. They would likely have known the stench would attract the attention flesh hungry, of flesh hungry scavengers, thus exposing the next passersby to a horrific death. Clearly, this realization hadn't bothered them in the slightest. So uh, let's fight against the monsters. A trophy is a unique type of card, and you can have only one in your deck at a time. The trophy will automatically appear on the battlefield at the beginning of the match. Fucking broad daylight. With the heat positively sweltering, have we to do with some manner of sorcery? We shouldn't exclude the possibility, my lord. And great caution we must exercise. Okay, your rows are now covered in fog, which is just one of several row effects you will encounter. Row effects affect all cards on a given row and can have either positive or negative consequences. Later on, you will also gain access to cards that allow you to add similar row effects. I love how the field actually looks Some like. Spectre? A striker? I can't nope, be sure you it. It's the first I've seen of any such thing. So, Foglets. Summon a copy of this unit from your deck, so they got the ability of knackers. 
instead of because uh, usually they were boosted by fog, um, which is not the case this time apparently. Let's put a Lyrian Sightman down right into the fog. A time to sow and a time to die. So the fog will reduce its strength by two each turn. But let's boost it with Meave's ah! ability. And then I think the cooldown will be reduced by the Lyrian banner. Whenever Meave uses her ability, reduce her count cooldown by one. So let's end the turn. These carrion eaters. I know them. Appeared on my estate last spring, enticed by the corpses of those of my sheep that fell. Harmless at first. Until, that is, they fill their guts. Seemed to become quite powerful then. So he, uh... Ooh, wow. He normally consumes, right? Deploy consume a unit from your graveyard, but there is nothing in the graveyard. Use fortitude tonics to boost the strength of your units. I mean, he has one more card. What's he going to do? I know I can use the fortitude tonic. That was supposed to be swallowed before. But let's do that. So let's just go and put that on the Lily incitement. I think I should be fine. Fearsome they look true. But they bleed just as we do. Onward! Slay the filth! Um boss, and I think I can just boss as well, right? I can because I don't need to spend any more cards on this. Oh, I, I I apparently need to. I can't end my turn, so let's just put this card Double down. To your command. And remove the armor of the ghoul and then pass. There we go. So fortunate we routed the beast before they had a chance to gorge. So, next round. And we get pretty much the same, aside from the tonic, we get now the pikeman and the arbalest. The trophy will stay on the battlefield between rounds because it has the resilience ability. Okay. Hi. Let's just do the same all over again. It's funny, her 3D model actually has the crests of both Lyria and Rivia, and not just Rivia alone. Which is weird. So now the Your ghoul grace, has consumed the unit. Bomb. They fill their bellies, ma'am. This doesn't bode well. Oh no. Not well at all. I'm so let's just use the Arbalest and remove the armor. And let's end the third. Ooh, the Al Ghoul. Strong as steers they've grown. And they show no fear. Frenzied, my lady. It's bloodlust. They lose all instinct to survive. Feel no pain, whatever. I've witnessed this before. Your Majesty, we must give ground. Fall back. We can't win. Must minimize our losses. Goldwyn actually... Oh, wow. Each enemy's leader has a unique ability. What the hell just happened? Using its ability, the enemy leader destroyed your strongest unit and threw it to the necrophages as feet, which made them much stronger. My queen, there is no shame in seeding the field when fortunes turn sour. Holy crap, I didn't see that one coming. If a round isn't going your way, it might be best to pass your turn. Yes, you can pass only at the beginning of your turn before you have played any cards or used abilities. Pass now to keep your cards for the next round. There we go. That was a nice ability from that ghoul. 48. Fair enough, fair enough. So there we go. We have the bandwagon and Reynard himself. So Wagenberg damage. Okay, remember losing just one round does not mean defeat to win the battle. You must gain two victory, victory points. Victory must be ours now. We shall not retreat. Arms at the ready. Attack! Look there. Yet another abomination. Ugh, that stench. My salts. Where are my salts? To successfully command your army, you should understand the synergies that exist between your cards. To get things started, play Wagenberg on the melee row. The ability of this card becomes more powerful with each additional unit that is played on the same row after it. So let's do that. Cards that have the order ability can be activated manually at any time you choose during your turn, but only after enough time has passed since placing it on the battlefield. The icon at the bottom of the card will indicate when the ability is available to use. During your turn, you can activate any number of cards that have the order ability. Most can only be used once, but the order ability of some cards can be acti activated multiple times in a battle. So I think this is only once, right? 
Can't use me, can't do anything else, so let's just end the turn. So that just consumes a unit. Um, so I have one charge, yeah. Play an Arbalest on the melee row in order to take advantage of Wagenburst's ability, which adds one armor point to the unit. So there we go. And just damage the Rot Fiend. And now we can use Wagenberg's ability, which is... But it's going to do one... One damage. That's not... That's not a lot, is it? Um, and then can I use Meave? I can use Meave. I should have done that first. There we go. One armor on it, because it does damage at the, the same amount of uh, armor it has, so... Another all cool. Reinhardt's ability allows you to reactivate units whose order ability has already been used. As a result, you can use Wagenberg's ability again. I'm not gonna do that. Not gonna do that. Just wanna do this first. No. Her Majesty knows what she's doing. Give one charge to all units with depleted order. Okay. Use its ability again. I don't want to. I want to wait. I want to wait because it's only going to do two damage now. Uh, there we go. Don't really have much choice there. Another consume. Because I need to be careful. Because that ability of that ghoul is incredibly annoying. Your opponent has run out of cards and you have a sizable advantage. Your victory is assured, so you can either pass your turn or play out your glorious triumph in to the very end. Uh, I don't want to risk that guy, because he passed already. I don't want to risk that guy using his ability. The beasts had the chance against us. Victory is ours. And there we go, victory assured. And with that, we can uh, loot a bit more stuff from around this place, which gives us wood and gold, apparently, from the remains of these things. My beloved, please write as soon as you reach the temple. I know only two weeks have passed, but my heart weighs heavy with thoughts of you. Our home feels empty without you. I hope your our offering through Do Modest will please the Mother Goddess. With her blessing, we shall have a child at long last. I've no doubt you'll make as loving a father as husband. Please be vigilant and return to me soon. Forever yours, Frilke. Oh, that's sad. Uh, and with that, I'm going to take a little break, actually. So I hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of Thronebreaker. And, uh, well, expect more episodes of this uh, pretty much every week. I think I'm, I'll definitely do at least two a week. Um, and that may be alternated with God of War 3 a bit to just have a bit of variety in there. And then, of course, group therapy on Sundays. But uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. And I hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.